Hello, attendees. Um, welcome to the uh, first virtual conference uh, of uh, Folk Alliance International. Um, for those of you who've been in the here in the past, uh, I know if you're like me, you you wish we could uh, uh, we could be here um, in person and talking uh, face to face. What uh, we are co-sponsoring with the Indigenous um, International Indigenous Music Summit it, it is this panel uh, so that we might hear uh, in, Indigenous uh, voices uh, from around the, the world and discuss some of the issues that, that face uh, Indigenous people, especially in the, uh, in the music uh, industry, um, and to celebrate the, 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 the wide uh, variety of voices that are live and have continued to be live. I want to first acknowledge uh, that uh, I'm coming to you today from the uh, ancestral lands of the Mohegan, the Mashantucket Pequot, the Eastern Pequot, the Scaticoat, the Golden Here Pagusset, the Nyanic, and the Quinnipiac. These people have stewarded the land and the waterways of what is now Connecticut. And we endeavor to remain open to these nations and these people uh, as, they're, uh, as they continue to, to, to live in this land. So what I'm going to do uh, is to briefly um, introduce the, or name the panelists. And uh, uh, as, I, as I name them, they will then uh, come on screen and uh, introduce themselves uh, in greater detail than, than I could. Um, we will, uh, it is scheduled to go till uh, 1230 Eastern uh, uh, time, uh, and we will save some time for, for questions um, uh, at the end. Um, and uh, I'm we'll try to manage the questions and get as many uh, as uh, answered as we, we can. So the panelists um, are Shoshona Kish, show, and uh, I've had the good fortune of, of uh, knowing show for, it seems like a long time, but I think it's actually only like five years. Yeah. Uh, um, and, uh, but she's one of those people, when you meet her, you feel like you, you've known her for a long time. Um, so Sho, I, I, I give it to you. Uh, and then we'll go to Sarah, uh, Ruben, uh, Shuteskat, uh, Dobi, who, uh, uh, Ruben as well. I guess we'll go in that order or something like that. Sho, over <laughs> to you. <laughs> Miigwech, Gerald. Um, Josh Kobenese Kwe, Desnikaz, Migazi, Dodem, Bachawanan, Donjabo, Jibwe, Anishinaabe, and Dao. Um, my name is Shoshona Kish, and I am so uh, happy to be here uh, moderating this panel today with these gorgeous humans um, and, and hosting a conversation that is, I think, critical for our communities at large. Um, amplifying and hearing these voices is um, something that I think in many cases we've all been uh, deprived of. Uh, the wisdom that's coming from indigenous communities and indigenous creators and artists. And, um, and I am really happy to be working with Folk Alliance to bring, like to make that circle whole and to bring those voices into the center of the circle again. Um, I'm an artist and uh, with, I have a band with my amazing husband, Raven, uh, called Digging Roots. And that's sort of my day job. And I moonlight as the executive director of the International Indigenous Music Summit um, and uh, co-founder of Ishkade Records. And uh, I am here in uh, the beautiful ancestral territory of the Anishinaabe, Huron, Wendat, Mississaugas, Ongwe Howe, and Metis Nations. Um, this is Three Fire Medewin's territory and the Dish with One Spoon territory, otherwise known as Barry Ontario. Um, I would I would really like to hear from all of our panelists so that you can introduce yourself and your territory in your own words. 
Um, so I would be very happy to pass this over now and introduce Sara Yannick. Hi, everybody. Uh, I'm Sara Aina, and uh, I'm joining in from the traditional territory of the Sami people, Safmi, and in the northern parts of Sweden. Mm. And uh, I'm an artist and I'm a songwriter. And uh, also my family are traditional reindeer herders. And so this last week I was out every day feeding the reindeers because it's not only the coronavirus, it's also climate changes that we are facing here on Earth. So um, it makes um, when, when you live close to the nature, you also notice all the difference that the climate changes are bringing to us. So I'm very happy to be here with you. Miigwech, Sarah. Um, Shuteskat, would you introduce yourselves for us, please? And am I, have I pronounced your name properly? Yeah, perfect. Thank you. Okay, great. Kualitlanesi. Buenos días. Good morning, everybody. Um, my people are the Mexica peoples of Mexico Tenochtitlan, uh, current day Mexico City, Xochimilco, uh, small town called Santa Cruz, Acalpishka. Uh, I grew up in <clears throat> between there and, and spent most of my life in Arapahoe, Nooch, and Cheyenne territory growing up in Colorado. <clears throat> and um, I'm an artist, I'm an organizer, have worked in the climate space for a very long time. And I'm very grateful to be a part of, of this panel. Uh, it's a very, I think, auspicious time to be um, even digitally con connecting with other indigenous folks and just like hearing y'all's stories, hearing about y'all's artistry, um, how we can connect and, and amplify these stories to push to push culture forward um, as a whole by, I think, modeling where we come from and who our people are and how we use art to transform. Uh, our people are celebrating 500 years of resistance of, um, of our tribe, of our community. Uh, and I have relatives, my grandfather, family down in Mexico who are, who are deep in ceremony right now, have been in ceremony um, throughout a ceremonial run for the last several days that we have done every year, you know, since before I was born. Um, down in Mexico, so I'm in solidarity with them right now in prayer and, and grateful to be able to kind of share some of that energy right now. We're celebrating our last Tlacuani, leader of our people, Cuauhtemotzin, who um, who died, you know, 500 years ago, pr protecting our land and our communities and our ways um, at the hands of, of Spanish colonizers. So, you know, it's, it's, a, it's a powerful time of, of year. This whole year for us is going to be very powerful. All of our ceremonies are going to be very important. And so as an artist, I'm looking forward to continuing to kind of push that energy and forward through, you know, these modern ways and also rooted in the old way. So thank you all for having me. Mm. Um, Dobby. Hi, thank you so much for having me. It's amazing to be here. Uh, Yamaguna, everybody. Um, i just like to uh, begin by acknowledging that I am speaking from the unceded sovereign lands of the Gadigal and Wangal people of the Eora Nation. I'm speaking from the inner west of Sydney, Australia. And, uh, you know, it's just such a, a pleasure and such a, a, an honor to be a part of this amazing panel. It's so great to see um, you know, some, some familiar faces who we would maybe otherwise be able to see in person. Um, but it's it's great to see you nonetheless, you know. Uh, my name is Ryan Clapham. I go by the name Dobby as a hip hop artist. I'm a Filipino and uh, Murawari musician, Filipino on my mother's side, uh, who grew up born and raised in Tacloban. And on my father's side, uh, is um, I'm more to worry. My grandmother was born in uh, Nambar land, which is northwest New South Wales in Australia. Uh, her father was born under the birthing tree on the Colgo River, one hour north on Motorwari lands. Um, and so there's a lot of history there, a lot of a lot of knowledge that I'm only just now connecting to, and our family are connecting to. And so there's so much. Um, you know, of, of a journey, not just finding that 
those stories that you know I weren't I wasn't able to learn as a kid but for so many other people in Australia you know I think the biggest problem um, that we face in the face of colon colonialism is invisibility and the erasure of our culture our languages and so you know it's it's just so amazing to be able to be here with uh you know all of all of you mob and and to feel you know that connection of first nations peoples all, all over the land so great to be here thank you so much for having me i'm so happy that you're here um benny would you introduce yourself yes peace and much love family is an honor to be here uh, sharing sharing this with such amazing uh, panelists. My name is Benny Esguerra. I'm based in Takaranto Turtle Island Dish with One Spoon Treaty Territory, home of the Anishinaabe, Haudenosaunee, Chippewa, Mississaugas of the New Credit, the Wendat, um, otherwise known as North York, Jane and Finch, which is the community where I live and work. I was raised in uh, and born in, in present day Colombia in Bacata, which is traditional territory of the Muisca Confederacy of Nations, also known as Bogota, which is the capital city of Colombia. Um, you know, Colombia has had a, a, a crazy history. Um, and uh, I come from a specific neighborhood called Policarpa Salvarrieta, which is uh, a historic neighborhood in Bogota, but also Colombia. It's named after a heroine of independence uh, against the Spanish royal uh, royalists before even Colombia was named Colombia. Th that territory uh, known as Colombia has had about uh, six different names and Colombia is uh, named after Christopher Columbus. So you can get an idea of the type of erasure and, and colonial history legacy that, that, that is a part of, of that territory. But this neighborhood, um, has a long history of resilience. It was established by landless indigenous and mestizo peasants that were displaced by a war called La Violencia, which happened, uh, began in, in uh, the 19, late 1950s after the, the murdering of uh, Jorge, Jorge Eliezer Gaitan. Um, and this uh, started a war that is still even happening today. Uh, mm -hmm. My grandmother and, and my aunties were the ones who uh, the original people who populated that land and, and reclaimed the land, they, they uh, took in tents uh, and, 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 you know, raised themselves in an armed resistance against the police in 1961. Um, and, uh, you know, even built tunnels and intercepted water pipes in order for the, for the neighborhood to have access to water. It was uh, built right beside a hospital a uh, hospital where I was born called La Urtua, um, where medical students were doing their internship and they also uh, helped uh, resist in the resistance until the mayor had to recognize the neighborhood um, as, a, as, a, as a sovereign neighborhood. Um, and, and that's, that's kind of my, my history, my legacy, the, the community, uh, many artists and other resistance movements came out of that neighborhood. Um, and it became a template for other land reclamation movements in, in the country. My parents came out of that, that context. Uh, a cousin of mine, Diego Marulanda, who also came to Turtle Island later on, who I began to, to my musical career with, is also from there. And um, my parents uh, grew up as social activists and, and, and artists in the, in the 80s. Um, when entire political movements like the Union Patriotica were being disappeared, uh, you know, by repressive uh, U.S. back a uh, U.S. back state, basically during that that whole war uh, that that began in the in the 60s, and we had to leave abruptly and, and arrived in Toronto as refugees. So you know, as as a as a as a child, I became politicized from a young age, and and uh, it was very difficult growing up as an immigrant refugee uh, in, in Toronto. And I quickly gravitated to hip hop culture along with my brother, who's uh, you know, a, a part of, uh, of, of a lot of the things that I do. Um, and I gravitated towards the, the, the elements, the artistic expressions of hip hop culture, but also the, the philosophy 
and and the the concepts like knowledge of self and self create creation, which are really important in the work that I do. Um, and and I've had the privilege of collaborating with many indigenous artists from Turtle Island. Um, had the, the the pleasure of touring Western Canada with Native Women in the Arts in the early 2000s. That's where I met uh, Shoshona and Raven. Uh, it was it was at some point in that tour that we met. And I've also collaborated, you know, with with many other artists. Um, I've gone back to Colombia to study. Um, and, and perform the traditional indigenous and Afro-Colombian instruments and traditions. And now I'm a musician, spoken word artist, arts educator and community worker. I have a, a, a project called New Tradition Music, which uh, is, is the, a, you know, I did a showcase yesterday and tonight as well. Uh, with that project, it's been uh, nominated for Juno Awards. As an arts educator, I've taught in universities at, at York University or Ryerson. Um, I direct uh, different programs in my community, such as Semillas Latinas, Right Path World Arts, and Jane and Finch. And as a community worker, I run a, I'm the programmer of a, of a radio program called Northside Condor, which is on Radio Voces Latinas on Saturdays at 5 p.m., 16:10 FM. Um, and I run a mobile recording studio in Jane and Finch, which serves youth artists from different neighborhoods that, that are at odds with each other due to different street tensions that, that have existed in the community for a long time. And, and that project has been running through the pandemic and it's still going strong. Um, and as a scholar and activist, I have a master's in ethnomusicology, a PhD, ABD in the same field. And most recently, I've been working with the official Temple of Hip Hop as an organizer, and, and I'm also working closely with uh, with different Temple of Hip Hop chapters in Latin America as a translator. Um, the thing that I'm the most proud about is that I have three beautiful daughters, um, who and and that's probably the hardest work out of out of everything that I do. They're also part of uh, of everything that I do, part of my project. Um, and uh, so I'm a very proud father. And uh, once again, I'm very happy to be here with such amazing panelists. Thank you. Chimigwech, Benny. Um, <clears throat> I'm so stoked to be here with all of you. And it, I have you know, some thoughts on um, the conversation we were going to have, um, but now I'm thinking all new things. Um, I'd like us to be able to just sort of jump in at any time and respond to each other rather than make this like a really, you know, uh, like classroom colonial thing where everybody's gonna wait their turn and put up their hand. But, you know, obviously I don't even need to mention to you to be respectful of each other, but um, I, I just wanna make a pathway for all of the, the good thoughts that are coming in this moment of us being able to be together. I know all of you are, um, brilliant artists and um, activists and community members, like activated community members um, and knowledge carriers and leaders. And, I, and I'm so honored that you've um, joined this conversation here in this space. We've made a deep investment um, in the space of the Folk Alliance family um, to dream some new things and they've been great allies for us and holding space for those dreams to happen and supporting that. And I, so I just wanna send some love to them and know that we are in a space that's willing to do the work, um, which I know that we don't always see in mainstream spaces, but this, my experience here is that they're, they're doing the work. But I think that, you know, it's the beginning of something and sometimes I think, you know, we pat ourselves on the, or, you know, people pat themselves on the back and say, oh, well, we did that thing and now we're good. Um, and so I wanted to, and, you know, as artists, I don't think we ever do that. We never go, oh, well, I made that song and now I'm good. Or I showed up for that protest and now I'm good, you know? And so I just wanted to talk about that ongoing commitment through your work as community members, can you tell us a little bit about, you know, the connection of your art and activism, why you fight, why, you know, where your love is rooted? Can you talk about that for a moment? Can I throw that to you, Dobby? Yeah, thank you so much, Shoshona. Um, as you were saying that, it reminded me a lot of like, 
uh, you know, it, with everything that was happening last year, the Black Lives Matter movement from June, uh, well, you know, way before then, but when, you know, it, it definitely erupted in June and, 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 it, and it came down our way in Australia and it forced people to, the, you know, to look into our own backyards and to see the, you know, the injustices um, happening in our country, you know, since 1991, we have had 441 Indigenous deaths in police custody um, at the hands and neglect of police officers, uh, two of which I um, know of uh, from Brewarana in, in, you know, my family's community. Um, and, you know, not one of these 441 have been convicted. You know, there's no one that has been put at blame. Um, a lot of these cases have been acquitted, thrown away, and that's in the hundreds, you know, 441, only since 91, uh, when we started this Royal Commission into it. Uh, one of the more recent examples is a man named David Dungay Jr., who uh, 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 was... was uh, killed in very much the same way as George Floyd um, in 2015 in uh, Sydney South. And still, of course, no one has been acquitted. And so what what I felt like I needed to do in the moment, you know, because, you know, so many of us felt so helpless in, in the conversations that were happening on Facebook and trying to figure out, you know, what was, was going on. And, and I made a song about the parallels between George Floyd and David Dungay Jr. Because it seems as though, you know, for us in Australia, we'll all stand up and say, yeah, George Floyd, you know, but it felt more from a place of pointing the finger because we couldn't seem to make the connections of what was happening, you know, in our own backyard. And so when I would mention David Dungay Jr. to some people, they wouldn't even know the name. Mm. And it frustrated me. There was actually one um, video that, that, caused me to make this song where I saw this Australian journalist, Australian journalist, uh, she was in the California Black Lives Matter protests. And mm -hmm. so she was asking these questions very condescendingly, you know, why are you protesting? What are you doing? Why are you rioting? Why are you looting? You know, um, very, very uninformed questions, very ignorant questions. And at the end of her report she said um thank you for educating me because we don't have that problem in australia her words were um <laughs> her words were uh uh thank you so much for letting me know because we don't have the history of police killings in australia and mm -hmm. i along with so many other people were just outraged and so i thought someone needs to say something about this someone needs to like really call out the hypocrisy and that's when, you know, I came up with this song, I Can't Breathe, just to, just to point it out. And I, uh, the third verse, you hear an amazing um, friend of mine, amazing sister, uh, Chloe Quayle. She goes by the name Barker. Barker and she mallowing up a woman from Will Kenya, um, West New South Wales. The song was so powerful and we really, really put our all into it. And it definitely did get a lot of, flack a lot of attention it started those conversations and i'm happy for what it did but as you were saying shoshona like i didn't want to make this song and then people say well we're done you know we fixed it we're, we're done you know because it wasn't like that and it's still mm -hmm. not like that and at the end of the day no one has still been convicted so i kind of sit with this weird conflict in my heart mm -hmm. you know for for feeling like it is what it is. I don't ever want it to be sort of a trophy on a pedestal because it's not that type of song, you know? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, and your work is so powerful. Your voice is so powerful that, you know, I, I really believe that the work that we put out into the universe continues to do that work as it travels. And, um, and I think that um, music and stories are magic. You know, and so as we're doing this work and I, you know, I don't mean to overstate it and take it into, you know, some kind of ethereal space. Like this is like this uh, work of making art is really important and our stories have power and they actually transform our ideas of who we are um, and who we are together and who we can be together. Um, mm -hmm. 
And, and so, you know, I think that that's why it's so important to the work that you are all doing. Um, and I, uh, Benny, can you talk to us a little bit about about the activism in the center of your work and um, where you are what where you are sending those stories to travel, why you're sending them there? Um, a little bit about that story. Yeah, definitely. So I've been working in in my community in in Toronto. Um, well, I mean, I, I grew up in the in the Colombian social activist scene, you know, as coming as refugees. The people who supported us as soon as we got here was the Colombian uh, international solidarity community. So I grew up in that context, and it was the first spaces where I began to share my music and perform. And, and uh, it was in that context, it was that context that supported a lot of the work that I do. So I grew up. Uh, as a result of, of, of that. And I began to do uh, cultural work in my community, which is something that my parents were also doing back in Colombia. So it's almost like, like uh, you know, I followed that, that same example. And um, for the last uh, 11 years, I've been working in studios in, in Jane and Finch um, that are, you know, offering um, free free studio time for artists in, in the community because, uh, as you all know, one of the most expensive uh, things when you're when you're an up and coming artist is finding studio time, and or or you know, studio time is very expensive. So that's what these programs were sort of offering. But um, you know, we we began to notice early on that there were always issues with space. Uh, where you know funding ran out, or in one case, there was an organization that uh, had a nonprofit organization where the board of directors were wealthy um, property owners, and uh, and the the executive director was a politician. And the different programs in the community, uh, you know, the working conditions were really bad, so the the workers uh, decided to unionize, and. To make a long story short, the board of directors and executive directors tried to stifle the union uh, illegally, and the program was shut down. The doors were shut. The youth were were out on the street, um, and uh, and you know uh, we, we went to the Ontario Labor Relations Board, uh, and it was a very difficult struggle. We ended up winning, but you know the the problem with nonprofits is that if if a nonprofit doesn't want you to be a part of the uh, doesn't want to continue the the programs they'll just find a way to not uh you know apply for funding again so that's what ended up happening mm -hmm. and then uh we went to another studio uh, on the south side of the community and uh management came in after we had a, a amazing program and they had a different vision so we began to see this this trend of like uh, having sustainable uh music programs was not something that 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 uh that worked and then on a and that was on a that's on a on a i guess organizing level or, or organizational uh nonprofit level but also on a street level there was uh a lot of different barriers where you know d depending on what neighborhood you're situated in um and what affiliations on a, on a street level uh, frequented the space, that's who frequented the space. So that's when we decided in 2018 to put together a mobile recording studio and get the whole um, you know, space out of the equation, the, 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 the issue of space out of the equation. So, mm. um, and, and, and it's, it's been really effective so far because we're able to really set up anywhere um, and not have to worry about about those issues. And we don't, we, you know, we go to the different neighborhoods so that artists don't have to travel because of whatever anxieties uh, mm. they'll have of traveling across neighborhoods. Um, and also police brutality, uh, police profiling and, and, and police brutality is a big issue. Uh, it, police carding in Jane and Finch. Um, so, you know, th those are those are sort of the the, the the things that have motivated the the work that I do, and uh, even throughout the pandemic, we had to because of the fact that we're so involved in the community, we couldn't stop. And, and I think that's that's something that that's really important is when you're really uh, uh, involved in your community, uh, it it really forces you to 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 um, to adapt, to innovate, 
Uh, we put together a physical distance recording kit where, you know, I dropped off the, the recording kit in each person's apartment and then through Zoom or FaceTime showed, showed everyone how to set up the microphone, record the microphone, you know, obviously sanitize everything. Then I would go pick up the equipment, sanitize it, file share it with engineers and then and put the whole project together. And we were able to release an album uh, in September that now is uh, is, is getting uh, rotation in college radios. And the project hey. is called uh, Wheel It Studios is the, is the name of the project. So that's that those are the sort of things that that inspire uh, the work that I do. And it's really like like a legacy and lineage of 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 my parents and my ancestors and, and continuing that struggle. And that's, that's on a, on a community level um, where I find my ins inspiration as an, as a community worker and activist. Oh, um, you know, I think sometimes um, in the, well, and, and fairly enough in mainstream our experiences are really not understood. Um, and we can't walk in someone else's shoes, but also our histories have been, you know, or his stories have been told and our stories have not. You know, the colonial history is known. Um, our truths are not known. Um, and I think, you know, there's so much erasure in the stories that are told. And this is such an important part of what we do, which is sort of balancing that and making sure that our voices are amplified and being heard and that our histories and truths are part of the canon of uh, the stories and, and magic that's sort of transforming and creating who how we think about things, you know? And um, I think that I was well into my 30s before anyone ever told me um, that there were indigenous people in Northern Europe. Like that it was just a never a story that was told. And I had the privilege of going to um, to Sami territory and going out and being with reindeer herders and um, hearing traditional songs. And uh, it was so powerful for me to connect to the indigenous <clears throat> um, tradition and history and people from that land. And there's something powerful about our voices coming together because it helps us know that we're not alone. You know, this work that we're doing as Indigenous people and the way that we're raising our voices together is actually happening in every corner or every corner, every not right angle of, <laughs> of this beautiful world. <laughs> and, <laughs> and, um, and, I, and the more I travel, the more that I come to connect with Indigenous communities around the world and, uh, and learn so much about just like that, just the amazing um, diversity of those worldviews and also that central connection to land and place that we share as Indigenous peoples that guides us, you know, the central connection to our ancestors um, that we are carrying forward and feel responsible. We are feel, um, I don't even know if responsible is the is a big enough word for what we feel for that. Um, Sara, can you talk a little bit about where you're from and what's happening in your ter territory and the work that you're doing as an artist and an activist to, to um, safeguard your land and your community and amplify that voice uh, globally? Yeah, um, thank you. I. Uh... I think that it's really, really important, or I feel deep inside that uh, what I try to bring out in the music comes from the land. Mm -hmm. It's something um, that uh, Mother Earth is uh, trying to make me uh, bring out to the rest of the world. And I think that's really, what um, also drives me in my music and what I do, that connection. And I think that it's also something very vital and important for the future uh, that we as indigenous people can open the door to the, to the nature or to the connection to the nature for other people that have forgotten 
where they come from and the true purpose of uh, uh, this big uh, 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 system that we are a part of. So uh, the Sami people has uh, for uh, such a long time been uh, uh, colonized by the Swedish people, or I live in Sweden, but it, uh, the northern states of uh, the Nordic countries. And um, it's, uh, it's always uh, a, a, a battlefield to make our voice heard, especially in our own countries, because... Uh, uh, when when you did give me all this, uh, uh, I did hear about uh, Floyd and what you what you your Bob, Bobby, yeah, Bobby, what you yeah. <laughs> yeah what you were uh, talking about because the same time when you were doing that, I was here in Sweden now and, and I was digging into this racial history about Sweden, and Sweden was actually the first the first land of the world to have a racial biology institute. And the Sama people was really a target for their activities. And they really wow. wanted to, <laughs> to uh, uh, they, want, they wanted to, uh, by doing uh, uh, scientific research, they wanted to, sh to show that the Sami people were uh, low, uh, a lower race than that they were. So uh, when you were talking about that and what you did feel and this connection that people here in the Northern Europe, they don't really seem to make this connection too. And I think that's what brings us together as indigenous people and also in our activism is that we are the invisible people of the world but we have such a tremendous knowledge and mm -hmm. also this sense for nature. Uh, and um, I think that is also a vital part for the future. So that's the basic situation here mm -hmm. right now. Yeah, yeah. Miigwech. Miigwech. Um, um, she she said, I know that so much of the work um, that I know you for is around um, <clears throat> climate justice, and um, and and I know that that has a deep connection to your artistic work. Do you want to talk about just that storytelling and the place of leadership that you've chosen as a young person in in climate action and justice? Yeah, for sure. Um, this one it's been really beautiful to listen to everybody. Uh, perspectives y'all are bringing in the communities y'all are from. And, um, you know, I think, la you know, land, our connection to land, land struggles, um, I've been just really excited to learn about what that looks like in different places and in different ways. And, and you know, the, the amount of time that we get on this panel won't be enough to like dive into the depths to understand the nuance of, of the different, um, struggles and ways in which y'all's communities are, are impacted and how y'all are using your artwork to resist. But I'm curious, you know, like I, I love to hear and learn and um, it's been really cool to see Lamb back, you know, as this very simple, like phrase, this very simple call to action, this very simple, you know, demand um, become popularized over the last, um, over the last couple of years. And you know, really looking at how that definition is being flushed out and is evolving in different communities, really looking at a lot of, you know, my indigenous relatives up in so-called Canada who are doing a lot of work, whether it's in the academic space or in organizing spaces to return and reclaim and, and defend land. Um, and so there are so many models for 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 what that looks like that I'm, I'm really in, inspired by. And, um, yeah, I, I think that is central to, you know, so much of of when we talk about like using our art to reclaim space in media and these conversations. Um, 
I think a lot of it is like grounded in in land and where we come from. And and you know, my people are on the other side, like my ancestral homelands is on the other side of this, like this imaginary human human made colonizer this made border. Um and so my my own relationship to land, my own people's relationship to land, the place, uh, has always been very interesting and confusing in a lot of ways too, you know. Um, and so, and, and where I have found strength is both through art and music, um, and also through like kinship and allyship and in support and understanding for other people's struggles, um, and how y'all are also going through these these motions of like navigating you know, these settler worlds that we, we exist within um, as artists, as indigenous people, as organizers. Um, and yeah, I think the conversation around climate too so often gets misconstrued as this like conservationist, you know, environmental discourse that is totally un ungrounded from community or from people or from place. Um, but I've, I've seen so many versions of, of these climate conversations play out um and have gained a lot of perspective as well on how i utilize my platform as an artist to talk about these things um to yeah really want to push back against like a lot of the narratives that even in the climate space are so co-opted are so whitewashed um do a lot of disservice and actively erase indigenous people's roles or oversimplify indigenous people's roles um in the defense of our collective home um and, and so there's there's a lot about you know these conversations that I that I think my art has given me space to breathe and not actually even be confined to this conversation of like climate justice or climate organizing or even activism um, because as artists you know we are reflecting just like what what is happening around us you know these 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 moments that we are experiencing um, and and yeah th this last year was super interesting you know dope to hear what you're doing bro just like in quarantine providing studio spaces for folks as well like delivering them the equipment that's so hype to hear because um you know i think that work like people might hear that and and not immediately understand how actually you know in some ways revolutionary that is um but i think offering up that space to teach and hold space for our youth to engage in art and in music like you know I don't know. I was I was like watching the Nina Simone documentary the other day, and just like really understanding how these artists hold space as revolutionaries in our movements, and it's really, really powerful. And so we, for me, I, I strive to learn from that and to be a student, I continue to be a student of these different artists throughout history. You know, whether it's Bob Marley or Fela Kuti, or, you know, um, different folks, but to really understand the moment that we are in right now and how our voices can apply to that. So. You know, I can't talk much about it, but I have these really exciting campaigns that are working to continue to push the envelope on these conversations around land, around community, through hip hop and through music. And um, I'm excited to share it with folks and, and just, yeah, to continue these conversations like off of this panel discussion as well to really like dig deep into y'all's work. And um, so I'm grateful for these introductions and like for, for this space that is being held. Um, but yeah, overall, I'm just, I'm inspired by the moments that we are in and that I think artists have a lot of responsibility right now and how we hold this moment going forward um, and how we can aid in shaping this and, and really in a lot of ways, like get out of our own way, you know, mm -hmm. and understanding that this actually isn't about us or our platforms or our, you know, our brand or whatever, like this is, there's so much that we can do to be of service to our people and to like this great this greater call that is calling on us to to play our part with the voices that we have with the talents that we have um, and and I'm inspired and, and humbled to like be in a position to be able to answer that do my best to, to mm -hmm. see what that means for me to answer that call um, mm -hmm. and so it's it's like a continuous journey to learn that but thank you all so much for everything that's been shared very mm -hmm. inspiring Timmy Gwetch. Yeah, this is, it's so inspiring to hear all of you speak and I respect you all so much um, as artists and community members. And, you know, I think, uh, I think sometimes the, the work is overwhelming for all of us because in some sense, you can't just be an artist. You also have to be an ambassador, whether you choose to or not. Um, and, 
And, you know, then we carry also this responsibility from our elders and our communities forward. And, and I think often as we're moving through um, mainstream spaces that it's hard to build that bridge because our, the way that we operate is very different. Uh, we come from very different sort of worldviews and cultural spaces. Um, and, and then we're going into these colonial spaces trying to sort of find that, um, find that meld or find that way that it works. And mostly it's us trying to fit ourselves into the pre-existing things. We're in very few cases, you know, um, in a position where we can come in and work with presenters or community activators that want to transform space with us, explore the different ways of occupying space and sharing stories. And, and I guess I'm, I, because there are so many, um, uh, community activators and people who are holding spaces and want to invite, you know, indigenous voices into that space in a meaningful way. I'm wondering if there are like calls to action that you would like to share with the community at large about engaging, um, engaging indigenous storytellers and holding space for that deep work around sovereignty um, and, uh, and putting that respect at the center. I, I'm just, I'm curious, like, I'm curious about as we advocate for each other too, like for me and as I move more into a holding space um, for these discussions and holding space for um, us to activate together. I'm really curious about your thoughts about how we can, uh, like what's coming next? What do we want to call to the forefront of this conversation? What do we need from each other and what do we need from our allies? Mm. Small question. Uh, okay, uh, Sara, do you have any thoughts on that? Uh, yeah, the, <laughs> we need respect. We need to be able to come into those spaces um, and to be able to be ourselves uh, in a very simple way, I think. And also this um, to hold to hold to actually hold space for indigenous music, because I also think that th this isn't only a question for us for as an indigenous artist and indigenous community. I think. Um, I think that if you look in a broader perspective right now with climate change, with Corona, with everything that's happening right now, we have some knowledge and some ideas about how to interact with each other that uh, the world is also yar yarning for. Hmm. Yeah, so, so I think uh, I want everybody that's a festival presenter or festivals and uh, other people to actually um, just as we do as indigenous artists, we put our faith into what we want to bring out to the world. I want them to feel that faith when they are working with indigenous music and actually just as we uh, trust our gut feeling, I want them to trust their gut feeling that uh, if they can hold space for indigenous music, mm -hmm. uh, they also hold space for humanity. Hmm. Facts. No, I, I really feel that. Um, I appreciate you sharing that. I, I think uh, there are so many spaces that we interact with too that are not just as artists, um, I think so often people's orientation of like represent or people's understanding of representation is to like put native folks on display um, as being like, oh, like we're doing our work. Like, look at this, you know, a very surface level. And I think I've watched a lot of discourse around even land acknowledgement too, which which I know like being over in um, in like so-called Australia, you know, that's that is an important Thing that I've seen at a lot of different events and I've been grateful to be on that land and to, to have indigenous folks and elders brought into the space you know yeah. to be acknowledged and to like welcome to country you know like at the, and yeah. I, I found that very powerful at the same time are we pushing folks to go further than that 
to mm. actually confront colonialism, whether it's in the so-called mm. Canada or you know the so-called United States. Like, and I think there is these these um these narratives that like, oh yeah, that kind of violence we see with police in the states, like that doesn't happen over here. Mm. We're we're just mm. this is new to us, but it's so, it's mm. so not. And you know, this veneer of like Canada being this like much you know better um or more socially conscious or more like liberal space than the united states when like the violence towards indigenous peoples towards immigrant relatives like is so is so you know intense so i think yeah i think the i would love to see people question themselves like white folks really question themselves on like how can we go deeper than than you know just the land acknowledgement like again those are good like steps in the right direction but even as we acknowledge with our art you know it's never one piece and we're done it's like we continue to to dive deeper into that um and and how does you know representation like i think is is less about like whose face do we see and it's more like who holds power and how do we ensure that power is held more um in a way that isn't so a reflection of like the white supremacist history that exists in all of our nation states um yeah that's one thing i'd offer yeah, no, that's so true. Thank you so much, um, uh, Shuteskat and and Sarah for sharing that as well. I'm, I'm, I'm taking in everything, and what what I'm so grateful for right now is that, and this is how I felt when I came to uh, Bob Bobancha lands um, for the Indigenous Music Summit last year. Oh my gosh! Yes, at the start of last year, <laughs> I was. Um, yeah, it's crazy. Is that meeting First Nations mob from around the world and knowing that we're speaking the same languages, you know, we're telling the same stories, it gave me context mm. because that's, you know, it's like you were saying, Shoshona, like this is our power. Like the when, when, when First Nations peoples around the world unite and connect and we, we, we make music together, we put art together, we dance, we sing together, it gives the rest of the world context. And, and, and that's, what, that's what we need. So many times I, I, I think about Australia as, uh, as a, as a uh, drunken teenager without, you know, it, you know not, not under supervision of their parents, you know, because we're this new lucky country that's come in and, and you know, we, we've, we've, we've branched off from the British and we're our own people. Wow. We're independent. Yeah. You know, but we still have the Commonwealth games and the queen comes every now and then to come and say hi. So what are we really doing here? You know? Um, and we, we still don't acknowledge our indigenous peoples. We kind of do it, it, you know, if it's lip service and those things are definitely important to be able to acknowledge it. But as you're saying, Shiteska, like at, at a certain point, you know, to some people, what does it really mean for them to say, to utter those words? Do they mean it? Are we pushing forward with action or is it becoming, you know, so that's, that's what I want to see, you know, absolutely 100% for sure that we've got to, we've got to have these, we've got to have, we've got, I, I want to see us in context. You know, that's, that's the, that's the thing that I, I want to be able to see. I, I think that's what's going to be the soundtrack to first nations revolutions, you know? Mm -hmm. Yes. Mm -hmm. Thank you. I agree 100% with what everybody's been saying. I think, um, you know, we got, we got to go beyond the land acknowledgements, which is really important because the details are important. Um, but, you know, uh, many of the issues that Indigenous people represent uh, are, in, are issues that, re that, that affect everybody, everybody around the world. You know, is the issues of land, the rights to land, mm -hmm. the issues of water, the rights to water, mm -hmm. the, anything pertaining to the environment, housing, environmental justice, displacement, uh, murdered and missing women, social activists, you know, especially in Latin America, and especially, mm -hmm. uh, you know, all, all over the world. Um, extractive industry projects, all these different things are issues that <clears throat> indigenous people are at the front line of, 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 um, of calling out and, and, and making art about. Um, so 
why not take it take it a step further and organize events organize you know uh what whatever it is around those issues um because those if if you're if you're um you know the best way to 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 preserve the the livelihood of an artist and 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 that and the community that they represent is to uh bring to the forefront the issues that the artists are talking about and the, and and that are strong uh you know that 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 are important for those communities and which are important for the rest of the world right so i would say uh that that would be an action item you know it is mm -hmm. is put together put together events put together festivals that not only uh feature the artists but that also uh why not involve the communities you know involve the communities mm -hmm. uh the families normalize the artists uh being with their families normalize the artists um bringing their families on board to these events nice. and and really learning about the issues and even uh even raising funds towards the issues because they, these are urgent issues that we're talking about that need support and not just visibility mm -hmm. i would just wanted to add to that really quick um i think what we're seeing in the realm of like indigenous artists indigenous hip-hop artists you know throughout genres it is really just a tipping like the tip of the iceberg for me like it's there's so much undiscovered talent there's so much uh, so many youth out there who have so much to offer, who have so much traditional knowledge, community knowledge um, to bring to the world through these different mediums of art. And so when I think about like, how do we not just like give these platforms to like a few people who are already known um, or like who already are like established artists and like, you know, like, hey, like we're gonna do good by like honoring our indigenous relatives and like all these white concert promoters all of a sudden have like one native act, you know, among like a whole um other you know festival or tour or whatever but like i think totally what you were saying like empowering the community empowering the families empowering folks to like you know be in you know the music industry or to create pathways for folks to learn about like music business because like indigenous folks should we should be like and are but like to a greater scale should be receiving the tools and resources to throw our own festivals to create our own record labels to you know, also, cause at the same time, like as much as like we, it's cool to be included in like the, like the settler world of like the music industry. Like we also have a lot to offer by carving out our own space within it. And that takes resources and that takes experience and that takes training and whether it's like this whole, and I think the world of, of playlisting and digital music and streaming, like gives us different opportunities to actually be able to do that without having to rely on like the, the monster that is like the Hollywood, you know, LA music industry or like, you know, in whatever nation your country you're from. Um, but, but yeah, I feel that strongly as well that it's like, how can we take up space in these existing, you know, realms, but also like be empowered and empower our relatives to mm -hmm. help us like with the larger, you know, like actually, you know, we don't just want to seat at the table. We also can have our own stuff. like parallel to everything and we're going to grow it and do it in the way that we are inspired to because i think the culture around so much of music is is really toxic and is really unhealthy and yeah. and um so i don't know i think that element we can build our own spaces with a culture that, that represents who we are and who and how our communities function and have that reflected in our art in our events in our spaces yeah yeah, Chimi Gwech, that's, I think that's really important. I mean, I think it's interesting because, um, you know, I've spent a lot of time doing panels like this and, and I think that there's real value in hosting these conversations in mainstream spaces. And, but I would say like the primary reason that we started the International Indigenous Music Summit, um, like almost three years ago now, was so that we could host our own conversation that was centered on us, where we weren't making a presentation to someone who, we weren't educating, like we weren't um, doing an ally workshop, we weren't, um, you know, that we could talk to each other and have the opportunity to like dream the dreams and make the master plans and, you know, support each other and learn from each other and inspire each other. That to me was, um, was like the primary focus of why we wanted to do that. And um, and I think it's been, it was challenging because we hosted the Indigenous Music Summit with the 
the main event, like the central event was actually a closed private event for indigenous people. And, and so, you know, it was this profound thing of claiming space and um, for ourselves just to make a safe, a safe haven, you know, and, and then we also all of the work of like building community and all the other spaces, because that's important to us too. I mean, we need both, but the reality is, is that we rarely get a chance to do what we're doing right now unobserved, mm. you know? And, um, and so I think that I, I really appreciate what you said, Shutaskat, because I really value that center fire in our own communities. And when that is strong, we have that safe place to return to and that place to move out from. And I really, I really want that for us. And I, and I, um, yeah, so I'm going to continue to fight for that for us and ask, you know, the, the courageous questions of those allies that we work with to hold space, not just for things that benefit, you know, sort of their mandate or bottom line, but things that benefit community in, in the, the truest sense of that word. Um, and, and I think that uh, it's, it's extraordinarily powerful when that can happen. Um, and I think that the summit is just one of those places that I want to continue to invest in and, and grow so that it can, that place can continue to belong to us you know, and we get to choose what we do with it. And I think that, uh, and we define, there's no top down. It's like this collective defines the way forward. And um, and I think we need more spaces like that. And I know that all of you are building those spaces in your own, in your own territories. But I will say that the, the dream of the summit began in Australia. Mm -hmm. And, you know, it was that deep connection that deep connection to land and family um, and colonial experience, but you know, and, and the that deep drive to make art together. You know, it's like all of the little conversations and families that we make as we travel and do this work. Um, I think that it's really powerful for us to have the opportunity to come together and and create that safe haven, that stronghold. Um, do you, uh, I, I've just been, I've been thinking a little bit about sovereignty, you know, and that centering around our own fires, that centering around our own worldview, where we're not always sort of working towards that translation for the other, which in a sense kind of asks us to other ourselves. You know, we have to step out of ourselves and kind of out of our center and kind of, um, shift our perspectives so that we can build those bridges. And, and you know, here at home, I, I really feel like there's a very strong and powerful conversation in my community about, about sovereignty, you know, and we're, I think we're all working in, in the spaces of diversity and inclusivity um, and, and equity. And, you know, it was, uh, it was brought to my attention from a really brilliant friend of mine um, who works with the Indigenous Screen Office here in Canada um, that, that Indigenous peoples aren't an equity-seeking group, that we're in fact in a sovereignty-seeking group, mm. sovereignty on our own lands. And that doesn't mean that, you know, the work of equity is, is not... Um, a profound part of what we're committed to and that those allied relationships aren't really at our center fire, but from a really important perspective, that discussion of sovereignty needs to be brought to the forefront. As, and I wondered if any of you had any, any reflections on that, because for me, that was a really powerful um, perspective to bring into the center, you know, as we are sovereign nations. Um, whether that's recognized by colonial government or not. Um, in the case here, it is actually constitutionally recognized. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's, um, you know, when, when you, as you're saying that, it reminds me of the, uh, the story of um, Mortawari country, my family's country, becoming a, a, a republic, you know, one of, I think, six republics 
so far in Australia that have kind of claimed independence. Um, you know, I, I'm, I'm not fully down on, the, on, like fully aware of the details exactly. So if I, you know, forgive me if I say anything slightly incorrect, but in 2013, um, this uh, group in Mortawari country, you know, submitted a, an, a, a declaration, you know, to say that this is sovereign lands, this is Mortawari lands um, to the royal family, to the queen. Um, and I think in a technicality of no response, it was claimed uh, uh, sovereign lands. I need to check, you know, my details there, but it, it's, it, it was just like such a, a powerful statement of this is our country, these are our lands, and we, we demand that you, you know, recognize it as that, you know. And so this uh, body was um, led by, you know, Fred Hooper, a Mortuary man up there who um, now lives further north. But, you know, so I, I'm constantly inspired by that. And just our people, you know, in, in terms of uh, always fighting for that, I, I, yeah, would, you know, very, very curious and would love to hear from, you know, other people's, uh, you know, how it resonates with them. Do any of you have any thoughts on this discussion of and sovereignty and how it intersects with the with the equity conversation? Yeah, I, I think sovereignty is is at the core is at the core. Um, you know, it, it's it's where it's the ideal of, of, of where things should be, um, because for example, you know, the, the dish with one spoon treaty. Um, there is so much to learn from from the treaties um, that that those those stories are there and those examples and those legacies are there. Um, you know, they're 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 examples of equity already um, that that took place. Uh, you know, way before the current system that we're living under and where different nations were able to come to peace agreements and, and live in a peaceful way, um, which, which all, all of those things, if, if those things are upheld, if those type of treaties are upheld, then equity is already in, in the, it, it, it's, it's already in there, equity is already in there. So I think um, the legacy of the treaties uh, which you know we we know are there, which are there in our land acknowledgments. Once those treaties are really, it's not just words, but are really become to be acknowledged and upheld um, and taught, then the issue of equity is already a given. It's already it's already in. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and I think I think it's also not like an either or conversation because I think sovereignty and equity are are like parallel frameworks that you know, mean different things to different communities. Um, and one thing that I've just really appreciated in a lot of the discourse that has evolved over the last year is how, how you know, and, and it was said earlier today, I forget who said it, but just like speaking to and addressing issues that affect indigenous people was like inherently liberatory for all of us, you know, or is inherently like, um, it elevates, it elevates you know many of our many of our struggles, and I think with you know the the movement for Black Lives, the uprisings that happened over the last year, I think it pushed the conversation for every you know for every space that I saw around how we confront white supremacy, how we confront racial injustice and violence, and in, in in these systemic um, violence, but also like this this collective ability to imagine alternative worlds, like this conversation around abolition. Um, and defunding the police, like I think that really brought back like a lot of indigenous organizing movements, you know, where indigenous folks like resisting these like violent police forces that, uh, whether it's like the American Indian movement that started in Minneapolis, like that's part of why like they would go and they would patrol to make sure that indigenous folks were safe from like these violent police. Mm -hmm. um, and so like the conversation really, I think brought all of us to a place where we continued to deepen our understanding that like, 
land back means you know black liberation like th those those conversations have to be parallel and have to honor one another and have to um yeah like none of this happens in a vacuum none of this happens in isolation like we are like our movements are so interconnected and like i think the more we lean on that the stronger that we are um and the stronger that we find ourselves and um so yeah i i believe that those two frameworks too like yeah can, can continue to be woven into one another and i think sovereignty specifically for indigenous for indigenous folks like that is something that you know we will continue to strive for through our art through these different conversations and also like I think bring that idea of sovereignty also out of indigenous, uh, out of solely indigenous spaces to bring to other folks and other relatives that maybe don't identify as indigenous, but are, are from oppressed communities. Um, and we could think about what that looks like more broadly, even, you know, in, mm -hmm. in these wider circles and these other communities that we organize alongside. Yeah, I think this <laughs> equality is, is it's, it's not about only indigenous peoples. It's a question for, uh, that's uh, what I think it's so important with systems. I mean, just because things has been written in a treaty, it doesn't mean that it's uh, okay. Or if it, it, just because it's a law, it doesn't mean that it's, because there, there are these, we haven't been uh, uh, written the story. We haven't been invited to the party of writing the story. So I think it's really important that this uh, uprising that we are talking to uh, about, it's not just about indigenous people, it's not just about uh, making space, but it's about actions that everybody has to go through. And I think to uh, come to this equal equality and equal, I can't. I can't even say that word. Uh, I, I, to, to come to that uh, space, we need to talk and we need to come together. And we have to do that around the same table with exactly the same space. And we have to be able to also be uh, to, to do the writing that is going to be done. So I, I think that's what I want to send out to the community. Mm. Yeah. Mm. I um I love how our teachings just sort of bubble up through the conversation. You know, my mom said something to me the other day. Um, she said, We are all a spark from the fire of the all spirit. Mm. And and I've been walking with that and thinking about it. And she just drops stuff like this casually all the time. Um, <laughs> and that's real. And, you know, but I was, just, I was just thinking about that. And if our conversation was a, um, not about affirmative action or equity, but it was about that respecting of that fundamental light of creation that th shines through all of us, you know, and I, and it's just like, because my mother is a traditional woman, those things just naturally, it's just like part of everyday mm -hmm. conversation and it's embedded in, in how she sees the world and how she speaks about the world and how she um, views the challenges and work ahead. And I just, I feel really grateful to have that worldview to anchor into. Um, and, and I think that, you know, this idea of all of us being sacred is something that I don't think that we get to talk about, you know, a lot in just like all of the circles that we move in and that this work we do is sacred. Um, I heard an elder speaking last week um, and she was talking about the creation story for Anishinaabe people and, and she, um, at one point she said, sound is sacred. The sound we make is sacred. And, you know, it like vibrates with all of creation in that. And, you know, it just, I think of the work that we all do as artists or as holding space for artists um, and being uh, brave in how we do that is, you know, connected when we are at our most courageous and most jacked in is connected to that sacredness in our own self 
that all spirit and and the sacredness of the work of making sound and I uh, and that's like from an Anishinaabe perspective. I know it's not the same for all of us, but you know, um, and I don't mean to to put it on the table in that way. But I, when I have these conversations with you all, I so I learn new things about how your perspectives connect to our perspectives here in Anishinaabe territory. And I uh, I'm really excited about grounding into that place in the work moving forward and continuing to. Um, hold space for those conversations that aren't part of the common discourse. You know, it's mm. just not, but we, it is when we get together. And I, I, uh, I thought I might give an opportunity for you to share sort of some of the inspiration that's sort of guiding your work right now from your elders or your cousins or your aunties. Um, yeah, if I could uh, jump in. Yeah. Thank you um, for that opportunity actually i'm really excited about this project that i have been working on for a couple of years and i actually got to perform a lot of it for the first time at the indigenous music summit last year um one track of which was called uh, it, it the track is called dippy you and patulinya and dippy you and patulinya in niamba language means the bird names himself um, and that, that, you know, it's music, you know, centered around this bird that I, I, I managed to capture a field recording of, uh, in Brie one early morning, um, which was super rare cause I'm never up that early in the morning. So that was really cool. Um, and it's this beautiful sort of bird that sings in a tritone. Um, and I still don't know to this day if it was a magpie or a korowong, which is, um, you know, two beautiful bird sounds, but I'm not too sure. We still haven't, there's not a consensus on it, but that, the, yeah, this, this music I'm making is, uh, is, is part of a big project called Warangu River Story. Um, Warangu being any water source, creek, river, um, Warangu. And that'll be something I'll be touring back from where I am now. Uh, in Gadigal land into Brewarana, Niamba, Mutawari lands, uh, where my ancestral lands are. So that's that. It, it's a really important tour for me and really, really excited to be doing that uh, in April. Yeah. Amazing. Yeah. <laughs> I wish I could. Uh, <laughs> I wish I could go and be on tour with you in April. Oh, that'd be amazing. <laughs> We're basically um, in lockdown here still, but yeah, I just realized as I said that I was like, "Oh my gosh, help!" <laughs> I'm very happy yeah. for you though. Please take one for the team and tour. <laughs> yeah, every time I, I speak had... with my mates in Australia, I'm <laughs> like, they're they're so you know, I don't know. The government handled it differently. I guess there's less population, a lot, a lot of factors, but like. Yeah, folks yeah. are getting ready to go on tour. I'm seeing some of my homies who are artists out there oh, getting ready man. to play shows and like yeah. at festivals. And I'm just like, yeah. I just realized as I said that I was like, man, I wish I had, I wish we had more time to actually delve into that because I, I really hope you're all, you know, doing well. And, you know, we're, I'm just, I'm, you know, so, all, so much love to you all. And, you know, it's, it's, uh, yeah, I don't even know what else to say, you know. But, but um, I, I, I hope you're all doing well and, you know, if everyone's going great. Yeah. Yeah, miigwech. Yeah. Yeah, I think that um, <clears throat> this has been a challenging time for all of us. And this is actually, mm. sort of, you know, it's, it's nourishing for me to see your faces and connect with you all. And we don't fully understand how energy moves. I feel like... Uh, mm -hmm. Like this isn't uh, this is a different way of us connecting, but we we still get to do that exchange on in and you know I don't fully get it, but I know that it happens because I feel it. Mm -hmm. um, I think we have only a few minutes left. I wondered if um, and I don't want to put anybody on the spot. We didn't like pre-discuss this, but if there's any verses you would like to share, if anyone wants to bring music into this space. Um, you can, we'll keep chatting for a few minutes, but I would love to close this with music if anyone felt 
safe and inspired in an authentic way in the moment. Um, and if you don't, we'll keep chatting because that's also inspiring. Um, but uh, I turned my phone off and it just decided to come back on and <laughs> ring incessantly. I hope you guys didn't. Was that really loud? No, no. Oh, okay. no you're good. Okay. <laughs> um, yeah, I guess it's time for, you know, we have some time for closing marks. So if that feels like music or if that just feels like something you want to send everyone home with, um, I think that whatever you're feeling in this moment is welcome. And I just want to say Chimi Gwich for taking the time to be with us. Um, Dobby, I know it must be, what time is it where you are? <laughs> uh, it is 4.22 at the moment, but... 4.22? Yeah. In the morning. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I love you so Bye much. <laughs> I, 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 oh any, God. any, any time at all, just to see all of you again, you know, and, you know, all my love to you all. And so great to meet, you know, you, uh, uh, Cat and Sarah, you know, so this is so lovely to see you all. <laughs> so at any time in the morning, I'll do it. I love it. That's so amazing. I'm sure I'm sure y'all are gonna post links and everything, but I am just curious to hear from y'all. Like, where can we find more of your work? Tap in with either the organizing, the stuff you're doing in the community. Where do y'all need support? Um, what like I don't know. You guys have like any projects you guys want to plug? You know, I'm just I just want to learn more. Like, this is some the first introduction to a lot of y'all, so um, I'm just. Yeah, looking forward to staying tapped in. I'm, I'm gonna be writing things down for sure. <laughs> whoever wants, whoever wants to take that. Likewise, yeah. likewise. I have We're all of our contacts, so I'll make sure that I reconnect with all of us afterwards. But yes, share. That's a great idea. Or or a song. You no, know, I I wanted <laughs> to share. Something. I wanted to share something. I wish I had my my. I wish I knew I would have set up my interface and 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 my beat machine and all of that, but. Um, I want to share this instrument with you because it goes back to the to the you know what what you just shared, Shoshona, about um, our sounds and 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 how important our sounds are uh, for us uh, spiritually. And you know, I, I can't uh, I can't go out without introducing the instruments which inspire me. This is uh, the flute that some of you have seen me play, and uh, you know it's ancient. You know, since time immemorial, made out of charcoal and wax. The mouthpiece is the quill of a duck's feather. The body is a cactus. Uh, you know, that's, that's just a short story. Um, as, as well as the drums that you see in the back, uh, the Afro-Colombian instruments. And these, these instruments are the ones that, that really inspire, uh, you know, so much of the work that I do. Um, I, I find that the melodies have something about them, you know, that, 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 that trigger memories for me. And, and, um, you know, some people approach these traditional instruments as something to be rescued, but my experience was that it's the other way around, is these instruments that really rescued me and continue to rescue me. The more I learn about them, the more I learn uh, the, the, the songs, the more I, I'm able to compose uh, with these instruments and make them part of, uh, of my music. So, so uh, you know, I can't, I can't leave the conversation without introducing them. And I'm gonna play something, but you know the I I, uh, I apologize for the sound because the sound is gonna be coming out of my my uh, my headphones. So we'll see, we'll see. <laughs> Mm. 
Oh, <laughs> it's beautiful, oh, Benny. Thank you. Um, do you all want to drop um, your links into the chat here, and and we'll try and get them up onto the public chat for everyone, so people can find you. Um, I just want to let everyone know that the International Indigenous Music Summit is happening in June, June 8th to the 13th. It's going to be entirely virtual. Um, unless something changes, uh, we might have some local things happening, but uh, we'll be coming, we'll be sharing from Ottawa, uh, traditional unceded Algonquin territory. And um, I hope that you can all join us so we can continue this work together. I will be in touch with all of you beauties as we look towards that. Um, and uh, I just want to say from my center and from the bottom of my heart, Chimigwech for your honesty and your willingness, generosity and sharing. I think uh, each of you is brilliant and amazing. And um, I hope that uh, we can continue to come together this way. So much so love, Shoshona. Thank you so much. Yeah, it's love to come to everyone. <laughs>